You're very welcome to the Woman to Woman show here on Confident Women Ireland's YouTube channel with me, Roisin McClarick. We have Mary, one of Ireland's leading life and business coaches and career coaches with, back with us, and that is the one and only Mary Curran. Mary Curran is also the author of the great book, uh, Life Begins When You're Ready to Listen. Mary, can you hold up your book? Because I gave uh, Paul Brophy uh, your book to borrow to read because he wants to interview you. So if you have your book there, could you just hold it up? Yeah, okay, okay. Rosine. There it is there. So Life Begins When You're Ready to Listen. Mary, where can people source your book? They can source on Amazon and they can source, source um, through emailing me because I have books for sale and then also Balboa Press, which is the division of um, um, uh, Hay House. They, you can get it there as well. Brilliant. And we'll also put um, the links below and we'll also remind our viewers at the end of the programme. Sometimes I like to get the, the plug in at the beginning of the show instead of just leaving it to the end. <laughs> it's <laughs> an amazing you. book and it's very true. Life does be, uh, begin when we're ready to listen. Yeah, yeah, I do. I so believe it myself as well. Mary, this week we are talking about empathy and compassion. Yes. And we're going to talk about the difference. We're going to talk about what empathy is, what compassion is, the, di the three types of empathy and the difference of empathy and compassion. So, but I, first of all, let's start off. What is empathy? Okay, so... Empathy, in a nutshell, is feeling what the other person is feeling, feeling their pain, as we say, feel the pain in your heart. Empathy is about understanding and being there with a person and being able to let them know you care, but also you go into their story. Now, empathy is very much needed in the world of leadership, as, and so is compassion, but we're, stay, we're talking about empathy at the moment. So empathy is all about understanding um, what the other person is feeling. Now, the one thing about empathy, it has been misused a long time yeah. ago. And how people misused it, which it's okay, but they don't do it in a bad way. But what happens is, let's say something's gone wrong with a friend and um, you want to help them and you want to keep them as your really good friend. So you turn around and you hear yourself saying, oh, I know exactly how you feel. And the friend turns around to you and goes, how would you know? what I feel you've never mm. been there you mm. have never had that experience so that's in the past I've I've seen it it's a lot better nowadays I think people are far more aware of respecting empathy and only demonstrating it with a person when you genuinely can understand their story you've had a similar experience but remember this at the same time you can be biased remember yeah. we need to be careful about empathy because we can be we can be biased by our own idea of what they're going through so we need to be careful so also the other part of empathy is it it it, it is a place where we do take the pain on ourselves so we can get drained and tired and in leadership it helps of course because you build a lovely atmosphere of trust and understanding with empathy However, again, you could be biased and also not only biased. Sometimes we take on too much of the pain and we get drained and exhausted. And that's the reason I will talk about compassion in a little while. But that's what happens sometimes with empathy. We can get very tired. And I think empathy you're taking on instead of being there, you're taking on all the story, all the pain, all the emotion. Yes, and, and and so therefore, to I think empathy. I completely agree with you, Mary. Empathy has it's taken a whole new sort of scenario. You, if you met, there's a lot of um even coaches up there. I I'm an empath, a, a empath. You know, I coach with empathy. You know, so the, they're taking the word empathy and the the act of um well compassion to the action, but the empathy is overused and sometimes misused. Well, no. it's a very valid point because when I was qualifying people for coaches, I had to be very strict with how they showed up and presented empathy in a coaching session. Because for us to remain outside the story, which is vital for us in coaching, because we yes. cannot be objective if we're in the story. Yes. So when I be, um, um, what's the word, looking and supervising the people, you know, that are going to be coached. Yes. Well, I'd hear some of them say is I'd hear them as I'm listening to them. I'm here now, like with them doing the peer group coaching and I'm there and I'd hear them say, oh, I know exactly how you feel. And I'd have to stop them. And I go, <laughs> the only way you show empathy in coaching is with a nod. 
a body language nod. You let them know you've got them. You you nod to them, but you don't go into the story. The minute you go into the story, you will not be able to be objective and you will not help them. Yeah. And I found what happened a lot was counsellors that did the diploma found it very difficult to pull back from being empathic. I mean, they, they found it very challenging, but they managed it in the yeah. end. Because we cannot in coaching go in and in be involved in the story because we cannot we can't mostly ask objective questions any longer, yeah. you know. So that's a very good point about yeah. So and 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 it has its place. Empathy has its place. You know, sometimes it's great to show empathy, but sometimes compassion can be even stronger and more helpful to the individual. Well, that just brings me into a nice flow into the next question: What is compassion? Okay, so the difference between empathy and compassion is empathy is where we we all have empathy. Oh, sorry, compassion. We're talking about compassion. Compassion is where we care like a human being. We care about the person. We get very sad when we see them hurt. And we want to show them compassion. But the great thing about compassion is we can help them without getting involved in the story. We support them. We understand them. And that's the difference. We don't go into their story. We ask, how can we help? And compassion starts with self-compassion. So you need to be able to give yourself self-compassion, be able to, when you make a mistake, give yourself self-compassion and be able to say, okay, what went well? well how could I do it better? What's the learning and the teaching? Rather than self-critique yourself and give out to yourself. So it starts with yourself. Compassion, there's many layers of compassion. And like, like empathy, there's three different levels of empathy. So they are very different. The good thing with compassion, a lot of the buzzwords today in leadership is let's be a compassionate leader. A lot of people want to be a compassionate leader. So don't not only want to hear what's happening like in empathy and going into your story, with compassion, we want to support you and let you know we understand you, we're there for you without going into the story. So our energy isn't used up as much and we're able to help the person that little bit more. And from, uh, from what you sent me as well and what we, we both know, I think compassion is more, I think e compassion is an action word, whereas um, empathy is a feeling, an emotion word, whereas compassion is an action. If you have compassion, you want to actually, you you understand where they're coming from, what they're going through without getting involved in the story or in the emotion. And then you want to help them solve yeah. and find and find a solution and solve the problem. And you're more ready, re readily available for them. You're yeah. able to give them more help because you're not involved in their story. Because that's the part that drains you. Yes. Yeah. And it's an action. That's what yeah. I like. Like action is it's a very good way. It is compassion is all about action. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Very very true, Roshin. There is a difference. A big difference. And I think that to me is is a is one of the fundamental points is of compassion. It's okay. What can I do to help you? Yeah. We're not going to get stuck in the middle of the of the emotion or the story. What is it you want? You, you need to get you out of the emotional state you're in. Yeah. Yeah. And how can I help you? And or what can we do to get you out of it? Yeah, yeah, very, very good, very, very good. And it, it, I, I use, I would say, in, um, sometimes, and it only happened last week in coaching. Something really difficult happened to this person I was coaching, and with compassion, I was able to guide her to action. Yes. And I really mean that. It wasn't me, you know, it, like. It's another time in my entire life as a coach, I, I cried with a client very seldom. That's why I never would have a tissue box on my table because I don't want to encourage my clients to go yeah. in crying, you know. But that's what I'm saying, very, very seldom. But I, I would say I'm a very challenging and compassionate coach. That's what I'd like to say. And what I'm saying there is I won't let you sell yourself short. I won't let you in any way, but I will challenge you. I will challenge you, and but with compassion. Yes. Because you can be very aggressive in challenging someone, but I've never been seen or known as that. But I would be, I've heard people say, you're very challenging as a coach, but that's okay. But I, I'm a challenging co coach with compassion. Do you know what? That's why we go to coaches. That's why people come to us and why we go to them, because we want to, we want to find out I'm here, I need to get, I'm, I'm here at A, I'm here at um, this point, I need to get to that point, and I need to, to, to have get the steps, to clear yeah. the steps, clear the rubble, clear the obstacles, either within me or within life, and that takes action. 
Yeah. And we all have to be, and too, I think we're coaching and I think we're compassionate uh, coaching or, or, or leadership is the fact that, you know, we, no one can do anything for anyone. Everyone has to be accountable for their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions and their actions, behaviors yes. to get the outcomes they want. Yes. But therefore, you know, a compassionate leader or coach mm-hmm. is actually facilitating that because you're not getting into the story. Yeah. You're actually saying, okay, you know, this is what you need to do. Or yeah. what do you think you need to do to get here? Because we all know our answers, don't we? Yes. And another very good point, and I know we can talk about this because we're both coaches, is that I remember as well watching somebody and they in coaching the person. Now they again was a student, like and she was learning. So I mean, not giving out in any way, but she went too much into the story with the person. And I let her I, I allowed her to do it to get her to see she broke rapport with the person. Yes. Because what happened was she went too much into the story with the person and forgot about coaching completely. Yes. And I saw it happening with my own two eyes. And I remember thinking, I got her to answer herself. I said, so what benefit was that? I asked the person she was coaching what benefit it was. And they go, well, I felt understood, but I felt we got well, got nowhere apart from being understood. I didn't feel there was any progress. Yes. And it wasn't. So it wasn't. She just sat there in the in the sadness of the story and yes. did, and very, very kind, but didn't move the client on. I think I just got a vision in my head. I think compassion is a nice flow in the stream, whereas if you get stuck in the story, it's like a pond where there's no movement, whereas compassion, there's a nice flow and stream, yes. a movement of water. And emo, um, em- empathy is about emotions and water is about emotions. So yes. if you're stuck in empathy, you're just like a pond. There's no there's no movement in the water. But compassion is about action and moving flow. Yeah, very, very, very true. Very, very true. Yeah. yeah. So Mary. That's the way yeah. Yeah. So Mary, my next question is we know what empathy is, we know what compassion is, mm-hmm. and we know the difference between empathy yeah. and compassion. Yeah. Let's go back. We're backtracking a little bit. What there are three types of um empathy, and uh, according to David Coleman and Paul. Ekman, am I pronouncing that right? And they are cognitive empathy, emotional empathy, and compassionate empathy. Mm -hmm. Can we start off, and we'll we'll do each at the time. Um, Can can you tell us uh, briefly, what is connect? Uh, cognitive empathy okay so when you think as you know in nlp cognitive is all about understanding so cognitive empathy is understanding the story understanding what's causing you a problem at work as a leader understanding your personal needs understanding you know showing them that you are mentally understanding them so that's the cognitive side of empathy and then the the next one you mentioned is emotional, emotional, empathy. emotional empathy. So emotional empathy is the one that we share the pain in our heart with you. We go, we've been there before. Now I'm talking about someone that has been there before. Yes. But let's say they turn around and say, you know, I had a PowerPoint that went wrong the wrong way when I did it. And I know what it's like. I've been there. I've done it. I've worn the t-shirt. And it's the emotional side. You're able to say, you know, but you must be careful with emotional empathy to be able to say, I remember a time when I felt the way you're feeling now. I remember when I felt I let myself down. Rather than getting uh, attached to the content, you don't get attached with empathy to the content. You get a, 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 you don't get attached at all. You think of a time when it happened to you because the person then will really resonate with that. And that's emotional empathy. But that is the one where we share your pain and it can drain us a little bit. And we can be biased. We might say, oh, I know exactly how you feel. But you might know how I feel, but you might not have the same perspective on us as I do. You know what I mean? Because so, it's different perceptions and different yeah, life experiences. Exactly. So we, we need to be very careful with the emotional empathy. And then the last one is compassionate Compassionate. um, empathy and really as you said earlier compassionate empathy is definitely because we're talking about empathy it would be shown empathy you're shown you know you're understanding them you're feeling what they're feeling you understand what they felt you're there with your empathy but also you are egging them on you're starting to move them into action and that's the compassionate empathy they're the three yeah yeah. I think I, I if I had if I had somebody, I'd rather have someone with compassionate uh, empathy. Yes. To get me from from 
from staying in the emotional state in the moment and in the story because yes. you want out of the story. Yes. Yes, yes. I want out of the emotion, out of the memory, out of the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Because even people, as you said, their you know their perceptions, their reality. Yeah. I remember something happened to me and a friend this years ago, and I'm still very good friends with this person, but her perception of what happened was completely different to my perception. Yeah. And and that was because of my past because it was different completely to hers, and I would have dealt with my emotions very differently than she did and I remember learning about that I remember thinking I know she's really doing the best to help here and I'm here listening but I know she doesn't understand me you know she she's just like she was trying too hard but her her scenario was completely different to mine it just reminded me of something that's why I had to help when you were saying that I should have been more in the moment but we talk about different perceptions I just had a, a little funny story uh, <laughs> I, I, my, my son was doing a bit of power hosing for me. I had to have a ladder. And uh, so I said, oh, it's starting to rain. And, uh, and so I just let go of the ladder. He wasn't even on the ladder at that stage, right? Oh. But he had one foot on it, right? And I, health and safety, I should have been holding. But my son is a big strapping man, right? And I'm just like five foot nothing, petite little munchkin. <laughs> and... Uh, so I said, well, if he falls, like, how am I going to save him anyway? Yeah. And I had a cup of coffee because, like, I never go anywhere without my cup of coffee, right? Sitting on the window ledge. So I just went over to get it. My son looked down. He saw me at the front door with my coffee. He thinks I went, I left the ladder and went in and made him a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> perception, it, you know, is very different. Yeah. And if he, he had his perception that because he saw me away yeah. from the bottom of the ladder with a cup in my hand, I went in to make a cup of coffee, which yeah. I didn't. Yeah. But that's where perception and reality can really get mixed up in yes. having that empathy. Yes, absolutely. That's it. And that's a great example. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We see yeah. things completely different. Completely. We laugh about it now. He says, oh, you want... And then I said to him, I want you to hold uh, hold the ladder for me. He says, well, uh, what would I do? Go make a cup of coffee while you're, while you're on the ladder. So it's a little joke now. Yeah. But again, perception yeah. and reality. Everybody has a different perception and the reality of a situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so I think that that's it because, you know, it's really good to actually hear this, Mary, because, you know, I've often thought I'm sick of the word uh, empathy. I think empathy is so overused. But today you've given me back that little spark of empathy and compassion. Because mm. if anybody said empathy, I used to just roll my eyes up and go, yeah. oh, but I hear that word one more time. Yeah, I understand you because it has been misused a lot. Yeah. It has. So as a leader, Mary, okay, mm -hmm. as a leader, both empath with empathic leadership and compassionate leadership are crucial. And uh, let's talk about compassionate inquiry. Right. Now, um, yeah, let's move on to compassionate inquiry. Yeah, there was something I was going to say about compassion before we moved on to that. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So this is a new area of interest for me. You know, I'm listening. I'm listening to people who talk about compassion and I love it. I love it as part of leadership. So I love the whole area. So there's a lovely man. He was in Ireland this year. I was away in Holland, so I couldn't go and see him. Dr. Gable Matt, Gable Matt. Yeah. M-A-T-E is his name. And it was him that introduced the five different layers of compassion. And I I just found them very, very interesting. Right. Uh, so I did. Yeah, I did say to you, I'd share them with you today because they're very, very interesting. Yeah. So the first area that he refers to and talks about is ordinary, ordinary compassion, which is where we want to help the person. 99% of us in the world wants to help people and mm. let's see that we, we are really um, unhappy that they're unhappy and we want to help them. So that's the first one. So that's the ordinary, ordinary compassion. The next compassion is, I think, let me see now, I know them off the heart. Yeah, curious compassion. Oh, yeah. And this is where compassionate inquiry starts. So 
So with the person, now, being honest, you can be qualified in this. And I'm only giving you an introduction today. Yes. yes. In five layers. Okay. So the second one is curiosity, curious compassion. And this is where you start with the, as we say, compassion inquiry. And you say, so why are you the way you are today? What is the reason you're thinking the way you're thinking? And we go deeper into it and we go deeper into it. And that's where we can stay with the person with intense presence, with intense purpose for quite a while, asking them questions. So that's the second one, um, which is called uh, curiosity, compassion. I think the third one, if I remember correctly, is compassion and um, recognition. Is it? Yeah, yeah. The third one is uh, recognition, compassion. Yes, the recognition. Compassion of recognition. I yes. don't see myself as different to you. More similarities. We just like ju we are just like the rest of us. Yeah, and I really believe in this because as a student of philosophy for years, years, um, we always started with the question, "Who are you?" But we also started by saying we're all equal in this world. And you know, with different religions and with different everything in every country, not just Ireland. We don't always feel equal to everybody. So no. this one is really important. This is and this is one that I know I have practiced when I'm coaching, where I'd meet this very unusual individual. And of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, I don't know about this person. Or it could be anything. Now this would have been when I was face to face with him in an office. But I remember thinking, move of Mary from judgment to perception, which is all part of ENTP. And I went, now, what is it I'm going to learn about this person? And I'd see them with curiosity. I'd see them with new eyes. And I'd say, what is it that this person is going to teach me today? And because I'd start from that place. And that is what he's talking about by the recognition, realizing that we look at this, we can look at, as you know, in NLP, we look at the sameness and we look at the differences. And to realize that we're all equal. That, to me, is underneath that. And I really believe in that one. So that's the third one, compassionate um, recognition. The next one, then, is the fourth one is compassion. Um, of possibility. Of possibility. I like that one, compassionate. Or, or is it compassion tr of truth? Is the last one? Uh, yeah, um, what, the, the compassion one. of possibility. When I'm looking at the drug addict, I see them as the beautiful person they are. Yeah, that's the last. So we've missed one. We missed one in between. Roger. Oh, sorry. Compassion, yeah. compassion of truth. I am yeah, not different. trying to protect you from pain. I want you to know the truth. The truth may be painful. However, this may be necessary. Now, this is the other area that you spend a lot of time with with a client. This is vital because Dr. Gaber Mate Med talks a lot about the truth will set you free. Now, the, sometimes when you're working with a person, you spend time with them, as I said, intensely in the moment, and you're, pa you know, you're giving them freedom to be compassionate to themselves. But you will ask, you will not prevent pain. You'll ask them questions that might cause pain. But the only reason, the higher intention is to get you to find out why it is happening, what's causing it, and the compassionate inquiry is there to get you to realize you know, I'm here, I'm supporting you. However, emotions of pain might come up, emo different emotions might arise. I'm already, I'm still with you. So that's a huge one as well. That's a huge, that's a really big one. Yeah, that's and then the last one. one is, yeah, and then the last one is compassion of um, possibilities, which is beautiful as well, because I'm often walking down the streets of Dublin and I see someone and my heart would go out to them, you yeah. know, and he's saying, what's underneath the surface? Like, we're all human beings yeah. underneath whatever we wear, you know, whatever we dress, whatever. And it's all about, you know, again, again it's all about non-judgment. Yeah. And, totally um, open and loving to people unconditionally. You know what I mean? Yeah, for the grace of God, go I. Yes, but it's very easy to say it, unconditional love. It's difficult for everyone to practice it. The only time I felt I, I found I was introduced to unconditional love very quickly was with the birth of my son. Yes. I realized you have brought the world of unconditional love into my life. Because I knew no matter what that child or now man would do, I always love him unconditionally, no matter what his behavior is. Because, you know, as we always say in NLP, we're not our behavior. Yeah. I found that really helpful for when we say we're not our behavior, for healing of someone that has been abused by their parents physically or mentally. Because I'd strip them down and say to them, listen, let's look at that person first, as an individual, as your mother, as your father, whatever. Now, when you think of him as your mother or father or whatever, 
do you love that person? Do you love that person when you think of them like that? Forget about the behavior, just see them as a person. And I always remember the ones that would be able to say, yes, I actually can see them as a person. And I do love them as my mother. Or I do love them as my father. And I said, okay, however, you don't have to love their behavior. And it's always seemed to work. It always seemed to get someone to realize, right, right. I don't have to put them together as behavior and person. I can separate them and see them as a beautiful person, but they have very bad behaviors. So I do think, and that's part, to me, they're all linked. Compassion is linked. Mm -hmm. And then they're all linked, you know. They're all linked. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Wow, you know, this has been, you know, Mary, I think this is one of our best so far. I say that every week, right? <laughs> every two weeks. But I think this is so important for really good leadership. So I, I really truly do believe that leadership, the whole leadership is going to change in the, from the end of next year, the end of 25, 2020, 20. I do believe there's going to be a whole different type of leadership all around the world. And I think there's going to be a, a need for different um, leadership styles and different leaders within our communities, uh, locally, regionally, and nationally, and internationally. And I think it's about going, we're going to have to go back to basics of pure leadership. And what you're talking about today is uh, the core of really good leadership. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How to lead. Because even as a leader, you know, one of the top competencies, I know we talked about before, but one of the top competencies is being authentic. Yes. And one cannot be authentic if they can't be compassionate with themselves. Because if we're not compassionate towards ourselves, how can we be the real person we are? We can't be. Because we're, we're giving out to ourselves or we're, you know, we're not being compassionate to ourselves. So this is vital in what we're talking about. So when, like, in order to be authentic, you must be able to be compassionate with yourself as well. And to be authentic, I think it's that compassionate, being compassionate and having that compassion with yourself and understanding yourself and letting go of past mistakes, letting go of the past, yes. letting go, and also understanding that, you know, every life obstacle is, now this sounds, I used to go, it's not a learning, but I do understand it. A lot of things in life, you know, you can say, oh, why did that happen to me? Poor me, you know, life's not fair. But what did it teach you? What yeah. what knowledge and wisdom and expertise do you have now that are other people who haven't had that life experience yes, yes. don't have? Yes, I often hear myself say to people, because I've had a huge amount of benchmarks in my life, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that, a lot, a lot. Uh, I remember one time a coach said to me, how do you do it? Like, you always seem to be in great form. And I said, because I am here today because of what I've gone through, even though mm -hmm. at the time they were very painful, really painful times, really painful. And I said, but I'm here today because of that. I'm actually here today because that, that's what made me the person I am today, all that pain. And as one person, I can't remember who says, but it's a great saying, you cannot have pleasure without pain. Yeah, you cannot recognize a happiness without being unhappy, and I just think it's so true, because how do we know what happiness is if we have not been unhappy? Yes, you know. So it's it's the same as what you're saying there. It's really and truly about being able to get through all the past events, and that now in that um area of compassionate inquiry, like as I said, there's a whole course on it. You would spend a lot of time on, as you said, relieving the past accepting it letting it go uh, because otherwise it comes up whatever I learned it a long time ago and I don't know it could have been Anthony Robbins that said it I can't remember but whatever you resist persists until you deal with it yeah. you might decompartmentalize it you might put it away on a shelf and say I'll deal with that another day usually when things are going well it'll come back right up and bite you and you'll go oh 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 I never really dealt with that and it'll come back up for you to do that and it's true, isn't it? I think with that, when you have that compassionate um, sort of leadership, you don't get stuck in the moment. You don't you don't get overwhelmed with worry because you go. And when you have that compassion with yourself, yeah. you know, I think and that compassionate leadership, you know, OK, well, I have a compassionate leader. That doesn't mean to say, oh, look, everything's good. Stroke your head. Don't worry about mistakes. Compassionate leadership is also OK. You've made a mistake. Hmm. What are the what happened? Yeah. Why did it happen? Hmm. 
Mm. Why did it happen? Mm. What damage did it cause? Yeah. What are the consequences? Now, what do we do to solve all that? What do we do? And I think that's a compassionate, you know. Yeah. And also I heard something, I think it was um, Simon Sinek said, that um, we all like, and this is connected to compassionate, we all yeah. like um, we all like to give feedback the way, we all like to receive feedback, give feedback the way we would like to receive it. Yes, yes. And he said that um, he worked for a boss, which taught him an awful lot. No matter what mistake you made, you can always go in and tell him, I made a mistake. Yes, yes, yes. And so I think that's a compassionate one without saying, okay, you, you bleeped up there. Yeah. Bleep, bleep, bleep. But okay, you, what happened? Yeah. But the door is always open where you can go in to your boss and say, I made a mistake. I bleeped up. And you yeah. know your boss isn't going to go off on a tangent. He's yes. going to, he or she's going to say, "Okay, what happened? Yeah, and what do we do?" And that is where the compassion is a brilliant gift to have in leadership because people, leaders themselves, make mistakes. They make mistakes all the time. Yeah. It's great to be able to go to someone that you know isn't going to judge you. And that's how when people ask me in leadership and I'm asked all the time, Mary, how do I build more trust in my team? How do I build them that, you know, that they will absolutely rely on me and believe in me and and, and, and also find me inspiration or inspirational? And it's all about the leader being vulnerable at times, being able to give compassion and be able to say, no, I made that mistake as well. And I'm here today because of it. Yeah. And I'm grateful for the learning that I got. So, and once you know you're working with somebody like that, it keeps them together. It it's does. also, compassion is brilliant in leadership for conflict. Compassion is brilliant because of the questions you'll ask, like the, the questions you're asking there. It's like, you know, like it's the very quickest way to get rid of conflict is to be a compassionate leader to, and show empathy as well and say, yes. OK, is that the end of the world? So let's see what we're going to look at now. Like, I understand, I, I can understand and feel what you're feeling, but let's move on from it. Let's see how we can move on from yeah. it. So it definitely is brilliant. It's one of the best ingredients, empathy and compassion are two of the best ingredients to deal with conflict resolution. Well, Mary, I really enjoyed this this uh, this interview today because, you know what, it's revitalised me in the word empathy because every time I went empathy, I go, oh, it just drained me because it has been so overused, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. especially in the last, say, um, I would say 10 years. It's just mm -hmm. been overused and, und um, I, I think, uh, misused. Yes, yes, yeah. Did I say that? Did I say underused? No, it's not been under It's been misused oh, yeah. and, and overused. Overused, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so it's really, re re so it's really given me a better understanding and um, it's given me a new starting point to start off with, with the new empathy and compassion. So thank you for that. You're more than welcome, Rosie. Because didn't, we didn't know really what we were going to talk. We we said we would talk about it, but yeah. we didn't know until even this morning or what yeah. exactly that was what was going to happen. And there's one last thought I have of Stephen yes. Covey, who I adored, adored him. I met him as well when he was over here years ago. Who was he, Mary? That's interesting. Now I'm curious. You know me and my curiosity. Yeah. I'm all. Always... <laughs> who is he? Stephen Colby, he's passed now. Oh, Stephen Colby, yes. yes. He's passed the now. Seven habits of yeah, all... highly affected people. I and one of, them, yeah. one of them was listen to understand, not to be understood. And that that rings home to empathy. It rings home to leadership. There you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes me realize that when you have empathy and compassion, you do listen to understand. You don't want to get your side in and just listen to be understood you actually stop and you allow the person know that you are listening to understand them big yes. difference a big difference big. and that's very key because it was i had a telephone conversation before we came on and the person wasn't listening to understand they were just uh reading off a script and i said you're reading off a script Right. I said, will you please, she, she, oh, well, you have, uh, do you have the number you can phone up and phone them? I said, no, you are the representative. You called me, yeah. but you're reading off a script. You, you, you're not listening to understand. And that is so unreal. I mean, people, 
in leadership, if you don't listen to understand the person, they will feel it's the, one of the biggest insults in, yes. in, in the world. One of the top four communication skills in the world is learning how to listen. And as you know, as coaches, we listen at three levels. We, li we listen at level three, which is a 360 degree listening. But just to say it's a compliment, we call it an indirect positive. Listening is an indirect positive. And there's a brilliant thing on Google when it says, when I ask you to listen, I don't want you to tell me what to do. When I ask you to listen, don't give me a, whatever it is. It's a brilliant, it's a quote in Google, but it's all the truth because people, when you listen, they feel valued. They walk yeah. away feeling they are making a difference. They walk away. It's an indirect positive. In other words, we don't give it directly to you as a compliment, but we do it by our, the way we act and listen. And sometimes we don't want to, and if we just want to talk about something, we don't want people to tell us what to do. We just want people to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can get it off our chest. And we just yeah. want someone to listen, to know that we're valued. And what we have to say is of value to them. Yes. And in leadership, and I coach a lot of people in senior leadership, and sometimes there's one man in particular I'm working even now with, and he would say, Mary, half the session, I want you to listen, just to throw everything out at you, because he's in a position where he can't share it with the people around him. Yes. It's his idea, and he can't at the moment share it, but he wants to throw it all out at, at me and then talk through it and look at what he's going to do next, you know? And it's like they use you, as we know in coaching, they can use you as a sounding board, and that's okay. Yes. That's we're okay we're prepared to be that. Yeah. Um, and that's really, again, where he wants, you know, he just needs space to be listened to. And then we, we, we mentioned Stephen Co, Co, uh, yeah, Covey. Co, Covey. I get, I get yeah. him mixed up with someone else with the name, the Co, name Covey. So we talked also about the, um, about, let me get the name. Who is Dr. Gabo, Gabo Mate? Who is he? I don't know a lot about him, but he's been mentioned. Well, he's very qualified in this world and was a doctor for years and he's retired now. Um, he was a doctor, I think, in the medical field um, um, some sort of he was very much involved in, you know, when people are dying and being involved there. But then he's been asked now to give talks and he's written about five or six books. I don't have them all off by heart, Roshin, but they're all mm. about, one of them is I think about I've heard of him. Yeah, oh, yeah, I heard. One of them is about com um pa compassion. Another one is about addiction. He's re he's a really good book. It's not the name is an addiction, but it's on addiction and different things. And then he also gives talks along with his son, as well. You can look them up on nice. yeah, YouTube. So yeah, he's only I, I haven't really. I mean, I really like him. So, but I haven't gone into how many books he's written or whatever. I'm not sure that that the story doesn't matter. Yeah, but he's very. <laughs> the very story good. doesn't matter of yeah. how many books. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It's very good. And I really, I, well, I, you know, the way you are like, it's like Dr. Wayne Dard, I adore yeah. There's people that I'm just drawn to. Yes. What happens is I, I just can't get enough of them. You know what I mean? I'm just, yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's lovely. And um, I really enjoyed what he wrote and what, you know, you can look him up yeah, again. It's on really YouTube. interesting, Mary. Yeah. yeah very it's interesting. really interesting. We yeah. must, we must delve into that, uh, this subject um, more going forward because it's really interesting. And, I know I've got a lot out of this this conversation today I'm because so it's right. really yeah. yeah and it's just I, been yeah. like a nice flow because I didn't know what we were going to talk about until 10 minutes before we came on yeah. although we talked about it then oh that's going to be interesting and yeah. and I think it's very valid yeah. to know with the, in, in leadership styles or leaderships the difference of having a, an empathic leader with empathy and a leader with compassion and the capacity yeah. the action. Now, I think it's really important that the leader has both been, yeah. able, been able to demonstrate empathy, but also show compassion. Yes. Because the kinesthetic people like myself, I'm very high in kinesthetic feelings. So in the past, before I was a coach, I would get so mostly involved in somebody's pain. And my son would tease me. I'd be watching telly. And if there was any sad story, I had yeah. to be crying the whole way through it. And I remember when I started in the world of coaching, you know, being trained, I remember thinking, what did it mean by, you know, you don't go into the, the story and coaching and you, you don't like, you don't go into giving a lot of empathy, you know, you stay outside the story. At the beginning, I, I really couldn't understand this. But well, I couldn't I, either. I, I told, I've been so strong with people that would have loved me just to empathize with them, but I knew I wouldn't be serving them. Yeah. I knew 
when I always say when I start my session of coaching, I'm going to serve this person today. I always ask that question. And I always say, I'm in service today. So in service means, you know, that I will of course demonstrate empathy, but I would be more, I'd be more of a compassionate coach and a compassionate leader you know what I mean yeah. and that way and the great thing is when you are compassionate like that you, you when you are and you have self-compassion for yourself you give the other person permission to do the same because neurons mirror neurons yes that's why people are retroactive if I walk out of the house and I wave my hand 99% of people let's say I see my neighbor going to the car they'll wave back yeah yeah because people are retroactive to follow you mirrors neurons mirror each other it's so it's so interesting the whole thing is so interesting it's funny how you mentioned about being kinesthetic i'd be very kinesthetic as well right yeah yeah and very and, and, and that's where i've had to learn not to get involved in other people's stories yeah in in coaching and the fact that you can't then i realized you can't help someone with action and solution if you're stuck in the empath, empath uh, in empathy and it also was a big learning curve for me as well yeah and um, did you remember we had this rule in coaching I, I well I know I had it for my people but I'm sure you had it as well which was you never coach your friend a yes, now yes. I often somebody would when they'd be bringing people to share who to go to do the practice on you know peer group coaching i remember saying no nobody can coach a friend or a family and they go why not mary why not yeah. you're emotionally attached yeah. you're emotionally connected you won't be able to be you must be the observer we must be outside there to hold space for you as a container unless you you know we'll ask you the questions and you'll find the way and you'll find the answers you know so yeah it's so true it's it, it's mm. amazing empathy and compassion though they are the bedstones of leadership Really and I think that's given me a new, a new, um, a new, let's say, a, a new vision and, and set of and put my set of eyes and and a perspective on. Comp and it's that you, for good leadership, you need compassion and have that balance right between compassion and leadership, and not get stuck in the middle. Yeah. You need that balance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, Mary Curran, okay. one of Ireland's most leading and experienced life coaches, who brought was one of the first group to actually bring life coaching here to Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, and with the people that trained me as well. So with the Irish Life Coach Institute, yeah. with yeah. Owen and Adrian, and then the NLP with Joe, Joe Sayers. So yeah. you know, thank you so much for coming back on with us. We really enjoy our chats. Yes. And, you know, and um, they're very valuable. I think everything that you have what we talk about has, very, has a lot of value for people um yeah. and once i don't care i always say if people walk away and they walk away with a pebble in their shoe i'm happy yes because we only expand when we are uncomfortable we, do, don't, really? we don't learn and expand when we're comfortable no so, and yeah so we yeah. have to get that balance right yeah yeah and yeah. learning yes Oh yeah, and life is about learning. We're always a student in life, aren't we? Yeah, until the day we leave, we will be a student of life for sure. Yeah, the day we leave, Mary Curran, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to Confident Women Island today. Thank you, Roshi, and thank you for the opportunity. Oh. And this I enjoy. I really do enjoy our conversations. I love it too, Mary. <laughs> thank you. Roshi. You're very welcome. <laughs>